Hey everyone. So in this video I'm going to be talking about HTML. Uh, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language and it's what allows you to create content for the web. So whenever you visit a website, uh, if you view the source, so right now if we go to for example Coderbyte and if we view page source, we can you can see that this is HTML. So these are HTML elements which I'll explain in a second and then you have other things like JavaScript and CSS. So what I did was I created a new folder called test and within there I created a file called index.html. Um, so for this tutorial I'm going to be using an editor called Sublime. So if you just go put in Sublime Text, uh, this is what I'm using, Sublime Text. Okay, so if I open up the editor, so this is the index.html file as you can see. So to start off you need to provide a doc type, so doc type and then HTML view okay so the doc type just tells uh, tells the browser what type of document um, this will be so the first thing we could do is we write an HTML tag so these tags are basically uh, keywords within opening and closing brackets so this is the opening tag and this is the closing tag so the closing tag has a little slash here as you can see so HTML, this is where all the HTML content will go. And then generally within this HTML tag, you have two things that are required. You have the head. So now we close the head with the slash. So this is the head. And then we have the body, which is where the content uh, of the web page will go. Okay, let me indent so it's a little easier to see. Just changing my indentation here. Okay, so the body is where the content will go. The head is the meta information for the page. So for example, a, the title tag, title, we can say testing. Now if you save this and you open up, if you save this and you open up this file, you'll see that up here it says testing. So the title tag is, uh, is what appears in this tab uh, um, in the web browser. So now the body. So I'll go over a few basic uh, elements that are commonly used for uh, web pages. So the first thing is what's called a header. So headers are declared with the h1 tag all the way through h6. So h1 is the largest element and h6 is the smallest. So h1 and we could say hello and if we copy this and we do, let's do like H3 for example, and then the smallest is H6. Save. And now if we reload this page, so here we go. We got our first content on this page. So if you view the source, you can see the browser gets this whole file, but it correctly displays what's within the body. And it knows what to do with these uh, HTML elements. So in this case, it specifies a header. Um, element and uh, the number corresponds to how big it should be. So you can see here we have the largest one all the way to the smallest one and here we have the middle element. So that's uh, a header element and there are a few other basic elements so we have the P tag. So the P is basically a paragraph element and it's just uh, a bunch of text can go here. And later on when we're styling this page you can see um, the differences in these elements, you can see the default styles they come with um, correspond to what type of element they are. You'll see that in the next video. Uh, but here we have P, which is just a paragraph. Um, then we can have a list. So UL stands for unordered list. So now within an unordered list, you can have list elements. So you can see all these tags I'm entering have a keyword and they're within brackets and then they you have to close the opening tag. So you have opening tag, closing tag, and the closing tag has a slash. So here we have list item one and then let's do let's do two. List item two. So you can see this unordered list contains two list items. And then we can copy this and also create an ordered list which is OL, which is the OL tag. Uh, and now if we reload this, you can see here we have the paragraph element 
And here we have the unordered list, which is just which by default uses these um these bullet points, and then the ordered list uses numbers. So list item one, list item two, and you can you can see here as the one and the two. So these are some basic HTML elements. Um, what else do we have? So we have a span element. A span is going to look very similar to uh, similar to a P element. And now if we reload this, oops. you can see here it looks very similar. There's no styling, um, but the way um, that their def default styles are assigned is different. So you'll see that when we get to CSS. And you'll see the um, pros and cons of using one over the other. Uh, so we have um, some content here. We have some text within all these tags. And now I'll introduce a few um, media type tags. So you have the image. So you can provide um, a source for the image. So the image tag is odd because you don't have to provide a closing tag. You can just close it like so. This is the tag. You don't have to do something like this now. And that's because the content doesn't go here. You don't put any text here. The content is what goes in this source uh, attribute. So here you can do, um, let me get an image. You can do a local image or you can do something online, like a URL. So I'll do a photobank.com slash images slash circle.png. So now if I reload this, I get the image. So you can see here how this image is on the same line as this uh, span element. And that's something that I'll explain in the next uh, tutorial. But for now, we can use what's called this break element. It also doesn't need a closing tag. You can just input a bunch of breaks like this. And it'll just break. These breaks are between this element and this image. So now we have this image. Oops. And uh, here you can also include a local image. So for example, in this file, in this folder, if we had an um, image here, then we can just link to it link to it directly. So if I save this image, save, I'll save it into a desktop. I'll take this image and put it in this folder. So now you can see that this image exists within the same directory as the index file. So now I can just do image source equals circle. And now we can, um, we can put a few attributes here. So width uh, equals 50, height equals 100. So this image will look a little weird because we're making it really tall and not wide. So here we'll do 100 by 100. Oops. And here we have a nice image. So that's an image element. And then we also have links, which you've most likely seen on web pages. And these are used, um, created with the anchor tag, this A. It stands for anchor, and this is where your links will go. So here you can say, this is a link. And to uh, link it somewhere, you don't use the source attribute like you did for an image. You use the href. A little weird, but so you have href, and now you can do anything like HTTP. You can do google.com. Now if you reload it, you have this is a link. And if you click on it, you get taken to Google. And now one important attribute for the anchor tag is target and then underscore blank. So this opens the link in a new tab. So now if I reload it and I click it, it opens Google in a new tab, as you can see here. So these are the image and anchor tags. I can put a few breaks here. Oops. And you can see all the content so far is being listed on this page. Um, and there's also a few other HTML elements that we'll get, uh, we'll cover in another tutorial. You have the video element. So if you have a video source, you can uh, include a video. You have audio. And then you have a lot of other uh, elements that specify a type of content. So for example, you can do article. And then this just specifies that this will contain some sort of article. You have a side, which lets the browser know this is an element that will exist on some side somewhere. So, hello. So it's going to look just like a P element. They look very similar. Nothing changes about them. The styling is very similar. So a bunch of text goes here. This is a P element. This is uh, an article. This is an aside. They look the same, but as we'll see later with the default properties, they're a little different. 
Um, yeah, so in the next video, we'll cover CSS and we'll show how you can uh, style these elements so that you can change the color, you can change the width and the way they look.